and welcome more and more countries in Latin America are powering ahead economically to understand which countries are doing well and why and what are the opportunities for linkages, particularly trade and commerce with the rest of the world. I'm now joined by Ingo Plosier, President of the Business Council of Latin America. Mr. Plosier, thank you very much for speaking with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Right. So uh, countries like Colombia, Paraguay, Chile, these are all countries which were not doing so well economically some years ago but are now continuing to not just growing but now even powering ahead on a much stronger base. Uh, why is this happening and what, is, what does this mean for the rest of the world? Well, they have done uh, a lot of homework mm -hmm. in the past and uh, restructured their economy, mm -hmm. uh, looking forward for keeping inflation into the ground and uh, keeping ahead about reforms. And so these countries are, pre are now prepared to attend the new middle class. Right. When, when you say reform, uh, what are the specific areas of reforms that most of these countries have embarked upon? Well, they make uh, labor reforms, okay. they make uh, tax reforms, they make infrastructure investment reforms to be more attractive for PPPs or mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, what's important is they integrate it more and more into the blocks where they believe to have a future. Right. And when you say labor, do you mean uh, more freedom to the private sector to uh, uh, take in and maybe uh, downsize as the need may be? Or? Yes, uh, to be more flexible mm -hmm. and to have more entrepreneurship uh, getting into some specific sectors, you mm -hmm. know, uh, service sector uh, is um, a sector where you have to have a lot of flexibility for home workers or for project management and so on. So it's different that you have a worker uh, in the factories or workers in, in the agribusiness issues. So what are the kind of businesses that are driving uh, some of this economic growth in, in the countries that are seeing economic growth? Yeah, you have the agribusiness side, mm -hmm. uh, agribusiness from the plantation side until the end of the product line for animal protein or vegetable proteins, uh, getting into fuels, uh, biofuels, on the other hand, uh, you have uh, minerals and getting also in the escape over that to steel and to uh, that area. And tourism and services are providing more and more uh, this area. So you have in the uh, Western Hemisphere of the South America side, the Mercosur, and uh, on the si other side you have uh, the area of uh, the Pacific Alliance, where right. Mexico is the driving force. Right. And uh, on the other hand, you have countries like Brazil, which where you are based, uh, where things have not been so good, maybe a bit like India, where growth has slowed down and there are challenges. Uh, what's, the, what's the reason for the disparity within Latin America? Yeah. Uh, we Brazilians uh, think that we could do much more. Okay. And that's why we are not so satisfied. Mm -hmm. But we grow to 2%. Mm. So it's better than zero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's 2%. It could be four. Mm. And uh, this difference between the two and the four, it's that we have a change in policy in the last years. Uh, also involved with the uh, international situation, the relaxing uh, policy of US and uh, European Union affected everyone, also India, Russia, mm. uh, and uh, Latin America. So you had to change your economy basis more to uh, keep the inflation under control and getting more the interest rates higher on the one side and on the other side the uh, evaluation of uh, the Brazilian currency has stopped mm -hmm. and now it begins again to be more and more so. realistic. So uh, these movements are different what we had four years ago. And so the capital and the industries and entrepreneurs have to change their strategies. The huge question is, is it a short change, it's only for a moment, or it's steady, it's sustainable? And these movements now, if you see the whole scenario in the world, uh, we will become more realistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, uh, countries uh, have to reposition themselves onto a world where we have unfortunately more and more protectionism. 
and uh, in that circumstance you have to be open and okay. on the other hand you have to keep your industry in in inside in brazil we lost three percent of our gdp and in industries to china mm -hmm. and that's too much and uh, that has nothing to do with competition that has to do with the exchange rates that has to do with the completely different models of economic economic in China and in Brazil and we are much uh, sustainable oriented and that's more expensive right so uh, you said so there are parts of Latin America which are obviously growing strongly perhaps on a lower base there are other parts like Brazil which are uh, fighting to stay fit uh, what does this mean for uh, countries outside including India in terms of trade engagement and commerce well we have to uh, relook uh, what we can do more and better together uh, we have a huge amount of uh, questions that we could solve together like energy and uh, alimentation, food and feed. And uh, in that sense, India has a reality about their people, about their form to make agriculture happen. But uh, worldwide we are changing automa uh, automatization and also in small properties mm -hmm. and in Brazil you have not only the large properties but also the small one and you have technology for the small one and if you increase technology in the uh, uh, small properties you add a lot of value and that you can uh, sell inside and outside and in that channel uh, when you began to be more industrialized you don't take people out of the process but in the whole channel you take much more people in but that's a political issue right it's not but you're easy. saying small land holdings need not be a disadvantage yes okay yes because if you concentrate then on specific uh, products on specific areas you can make cooperation cooperatives mm. uh, with them uh, you can uh, join with technology and management about then you can buy cheaper you can have education to do things together in a different form and so on and that are challenges for the new for the new moment that we are keeping on because we need more and more and more uh, to have uh, food safety right. and energy safety right. and the biomass is a fantastic alternative for India too India is an importer of uh, naphtha and uh, could be maybe one day an exporter of uh, biomass uh, potentials because you have right. a huge amount of that as we do. Right. So last question, uh, you've been on the board of a company like Embraer. Now, uh, what does it take uh, to you know, create organizations like that? Because you would imagine that such companies are more likely to come up in North America or Europe traditionally. Uh, and Brazil presented a great example by uh, with Embraer. You think that this can be replicated in other countries in this growth net? Absolutely. Because uh, you have intelligent people all in the world. And if you focus them and bring them to the whole demand that you can have in your countries, and you have fantastic companies in India too. You have Tata, you have Mahindra, you have a lot of companies with a huge uh, knowledge of how to do things better and they can teach uh, thing others in the world yeah. but that is I suppose a challenge that we uh, used to find out where are our abilities and our internal potentials and use them with intensity and be very focused government has to look for them uh, because other governments look also for them United States don't leave Google alone, <laughs> don't leave a Boeing alone, mm. and so on. So the Indian government has to be aware, aware about what are their stars, and you have to keep their stars and, and polish them so they have a shiny and fantastic, uh, brilliant future. Right, that's a good note to end on. Thank you very much for speaking Thank with you. us. <laughs>